Okay, so adding devices. Now, Libri NMS would be pretty pointless if we didn't monitor anything with it. So uh, one of the core concepts is that you add devices in here and you monitor a bunch of stats on those devices. Uh, so in order to do that, you just go to devices, add device, uh, and all it's really asking for here is the hostname or IP address and the community string. Now, Libri NMS is really based on SNMP. It wants SNMP. Um, that's pretty much the heart of what Librian MS is made out of. So if you if your device doesn't support SNMP, you can still add it in here, but you'd have to turn off SNMP. Uh, you still have to put the host name or IP address in, but you'd have to fill out all this other information manually. You don't have to; it is optional, but it would help if you knew what kind of device this was. If I just added my IP address in here and added it, uh, this would add. I, I have an actual IP address on this, so I just added this. But you can see there's really no information in here about it. Uh, I don't know what this is or what it does. Um, uh, so you could actually go back in here and edit the device and uh, fill out this information again in here. So uh, settings and SNMP and you can edit the sysname, which is basically just the name that pops under here. So I know this is a wireless uh, access point and I think it's an R7000 Netgear, but we'll just put that in there just to give us some, a little bit of extra data. If you go back to overview here, now you can see the system name is wireless access point and the hardware is R7000. I'm sorry, actually the sys location would pop underneath here. So you can actually go and edit this and override the sys location too. So uh, um, I guess I will talk about that in this video too, because uh, this sys location is a very good way of organizing your devices. Um, uh, and what this is, is just the syslocation field in the device. Uh, now, I added this device as a ping-only device, so obviously it couldn't grab any information from the device. But I can override this by just putting uh, uh, my home, uh, com room, or something like that. And hit save here. And now if I go back to overview, you can see my home, com room. It's in this location. Now, if I click on this, it'll actually show me all, all the devices in that location. So if we go back here, we kind of got off track here. Let's go back to add a device. Uh, we want to add an SNMP device now because, you know, ping only devices are great, but, you know, they don't really show us anything. We don't have really any graphs. We have the availability graph. We see how long the polar ran. Uh, we can see some logs. Uh, you might be able to alert if it's down or up, but that's pretty much it. You know, you don't get that processing graphs, memory graphs port graphs, uh, bandwidth utilization graphs. So you don't really get any of that information. So this is, it is helpful in some cases, uh, but uh, majority of the time, you're gonna only wanna add devices in here that are SNMP enabled. And as you can see, these two, one's a switch and this is a PFSense. Uh, both of these have SNMP enabled, so obviously they're grabbing all these stats in here. So one thing we don't have in here yet is the local host, which is the server that Libri NMS is running on. So you really wanna add that because you can see a lot of, uh, you know, troubleshooting uh, bandwidth, uh, CPU utilization, memory utilization, all these different things, you, you'll want to use that because as you grow your Libri NMS uh, to larger and larger scales, you'll want to be watching all these things to make sure that you're not maxing out the CPU. Uh, when I first started with Libri NMS, I installed this and the database was on the same machine exactly how we have here and it was just maxing out the CPU 100%. So when I would click on things, it would take forever to load. This page would take maybe up to like 30 seconds to load all these graphs and everything. Uh, so it's something you want to watch out for. Obviously, I only have two devices, three devices, so it's not really a big deal, but as you start growing, you'll see that uh, you need to keep an eye on that. So let's just try and add the local host here, which is the same server Libri NMS is running on, local host. And I set this up in the install video, but I don't remember what the password was. So uh, this is just setting up uh, SNMP on a Ubuntu server. So this really has nothing to do with uh, Libri NMS or anything. Any device you add in here, you're gonna have to figure out the way you enable SNMP on that device. Uh, every device is a little bit different. Uh, some of them support different things and different ways of going about it, but just they're all pretty self-explanatory for the most part. And if you have a little trouble, I'm sure in the documentations I'll tell you to do it. Uh, so if you have, if you want to set up SNMP on a Ubuntu server, there's probably some other videos out there. I won't go too much in depth with it, but there is just a file here that we need to edit to. Um, to look at the community string and that community string is basically just a password in order to allow Libri NMS to talk to this device by SNMP. Uh, and this is the community string right here and it's read only and I don't care if it's right because we're only reading from the device. So this is says random SNMP. So let's see if this actually works. We're going to put that in here. 
add device. And it did. So this added the device because it could ping it and it was able to talk to the community string. Now, if I try to put in localhost, it's probably going to complain, but let's just say localhost1, because that doesn't exist anywhere. And let's just put this as 1, 2, 3. Now, it's going to say it failed because it could not ping it. Um, so that's that's nice that it gives you a little error there. So you can see here I have the Librium MS, and it actually did find some information on running Ubuntu 20, the kernel, uh, and all different things in here. Now you see the processor right here. This is what you want to look at when you're uh, troubleshooting. Uh, it's, uh, things are going slow. Uh, I can't click on things. They take forever to load. You want to keep an eye on this processing power. Um, and traffic is usually not that big a deal. Memory isn't either. But usually CPU power is the most thing you want to look at. So when I added this device, I didn't change the syslocation information. So we want to talk about uh, this geolocations real quick. This is a way to group devices in Librium MS, and it's a way that you don't have to do it manually after you add the device. So every time I add a device, I could create another device group, and I'll create another video for that because that's kind of a separate thing. But I want to have I have three different locations here, but they're all in my house. You know, they're they're, they're not in these different locations, and they're the reason why they're in three different locations is because I had the syslocation field on this PSN set to this. I had the syslocation on this switch set to nothing, so there is it is not in a location. Uh, this wireless access point I overrid. So uh, I put that in manually, and this one I didn't set up anything at all. This is just the default config that I think comes with the Ubuntu, or, or this is, this might actually be the one that was on the Librium MS website. But you can see right here, here's the syslocation field right here for this device. So if I wanted to put it into the same location as my firewall, I could just simply copy and paste this line in here. I'll backspace all this out. Copy and paste that, save it. And in order for that to take effect, we need to restart the SNMP service. Okay, so that started. And I believe the next time it pulls, it'll actually find that. But you know what? We're going to try and pull it manually because we want it. We don't want to wait five minutes. So go to capture, polar, run. Okay, it finished. Let's do overview. And it did something, but it didn't update this yet. And you know why? Because that's probably discovered in the discovery script. Let's run the discovery script. There you go. So that's one of the things you have to keep in mind here. You know, the discovery script finds some information. The polar script finds other information. So uh, like I said in the previous videos about polar and discovery modules, you just want to run them both just to get the most latest updated information. So now if I click on this, I have two devices in here. Uh, this has to match exactly. Uh, this this, this uh, location name has to match exactly. If you have a space at the end here, you'll create two different locations. So you just got to remember that these, in order for them to show up in the same location here, uh, they have to match exactly. So that being said, we can go here to all locations, and we see now that this was the location of our local host, our Librium MS server, but it's no longer being used by anything. Uh, there's zero devices assigned to it, so I can now delete it. It won't let you delete locations that have devices assigned to them, and that's probably a good thing. So we can delete this to get it out of the list there, and now if I go to locations, if I refresh my screen, I only have two locations now. Same thing for this other one. Uh, this was a ping-only device, and we could just edit this and override the syslocation to the same. If we click on overview, now we have three devices in that location. So it's very good when you're planning out your devices to kind of uh, come up with a scheme here. This is just a string, so you can put anything you want in here and kind of organize this any way you want. Uh, so it really doesn't matter uh, what, what you put in there. It's just that if you want to group them together, you're going to need to put them the same exact name in there. Okay, so another cool thing with syslocations and locations in Librium MS is that you can actually put coordinates. Uh, I believe by default, it will actually try and figure out where this device is in the world by the street address. But as you know, sometimes street addresses are not the best way of doing things, whereas coordinates, uh, latitude and longitude, are exact. That's exactly where it's going to be. Uh, so if you know the coordinates, you could just paste them in there. But sometimes, you know, we don't know where they are at. But you could find it on Google Maps. And usually I just right-click on somewhere, say, what's here? And I will see that the coordinates are right here. I'll copy and paste these in here. We can go to edit. You know what we're going to do? We're actually going to edit this in the uh, in the actual 
fastest location field on the device. And in order to do that, you basically just go in here and you put some brackets in, like this, and hit save. So I'm, it's the same concept. I have a string in here with this exact thing. So, you know, if I, if I had multiple devices in here, I would have to make sure that this entire thing matches uh, between the devices, you know. So now if I hit save this, we're going to rediscover it, restart SMP. Okay, we're going to go back into our local host here. We're going to capture this, discover it. So now you can see that we have a coordinate at the end here. So if I click on this, now we only have this one device in here, obviously, because, you know, we have, uh, they, they actually take away, so this might get confusing, they actually take away the coordinates in this list here because, you know, it would be a very long string here in this list. So keep that in mind. If you see two different locations, you're like, that's exactly the freaking same. Uh, yeah, well, they are, but one has uh, coordinates at the end of it. Uh, I believe if you go to all locations here, yeah, so if you go to all locations, you can actually see it all written out, and you can see that this has a location. But what's cool about this is if you click on this device, you can just click on the map feature right here, and that'll pull up the Google map right where I went, or I could just have an in, in uh, what is it called, in browser or in screen map here of where that device actually was. So I don't have to actually... Uh, uh, go outside of Libri and MS to see that. And you can actually drag and drop this icon around. So if you do that, it will update the uh, location in here for just this device. Uh, now, I believe when it does that, it's not actually going to overwrite the sys name, the sys location. So let's see here. This is 82493, oh, and then 493 there. So this is 493. Let's discover this again and see if it, if it overwrites it. And it did not. So that's that's something to keep in mind because I've been playing, I've clicked on this and actually dragged this away. And I'm like, oh, well, the next time I clicked on it, I'm like, that's not where it was because I accidentally clicked on it. So you might want to just, if you're using this with a bunch of people, just train them not to really drag this icon around and move it too much uh, because it will update where it's actually at, where this icon is placed. Pretty much it for uh, adding devices. Now, there isn't a way really to bulk import. If you're coming from another network management system or maybe you just have a spreadsheet of a bunch of devices you want to add in here, um, you kind of just have to go in here and add them all manually. You could write your own script. Now, I actually made a script in Python that actually does this for you. Uh, so uh, I have some directions in here how to run it. But basically, you're just putting, you're putting together a CSV file here uh, with the host name uh, and the community string. And you could one each uh, row in here is a device. So if I could have have 500,000 devices in here uh, and it'll go through and add each one manually uh, and you can also add ping only devices because remember when you ping only device there's not going to be a community string here but uh, you can have uh, you can set the hardware for it you can set the sys name for it uh, the OS for it uh, and these these OS's are basically just the icons um, and you can find a list of OS's on here and I believe I set it in the actual github repository here yeah Librian MS OS definitions so you can see what the names of those are. But if you if you need to bulk import a ton of devices, I would highly recommend this. Uh, this is actually my first GitHub project I ever released on here. And a couple of people have already said uh, they've used it and it worked perfectly fine. So I'm happy that uh, worked out for everybody. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.